Hey everyone, welcome to part 78 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll add dialogue choices. So here you can see, after showing the dialogue, the player can select one of these choices. And based on the choice, we can run different actions. So for example, if I select yes, then this NPC will heal my Pokemon. And if I select no, then he won't heal and he'll just show a different dialogue. All right. So let's look at how to implement this. You can support the making of the series by becoming a Patreon and get some cool rewards for it, like access to the complete project files of the series, exclusive tutorials that are not covered on YouTube and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first, I'll create the UI for the choice box. So let me go inside the UI canvas prefab. Alright. So let me just disable the inventory UI from here. And let me enable the dialog box. Just so that we can get a reference while creating the choice box. All right, so to the UI canvas, I'll add a new image and I'll call this choice box. All right, so I'll place this just below the dialog box. Okay, so next, I want the choice box to be anchored to the right side of the screen. So I'll change the anchor to right middle and I'll also hold alt so that it also changes the position okay so now let me just make it big and place it properly okay so next I'll change its image to the dialog box image itself so we have created a background for the choice box so next we need a list of text inside the choice box to show the choices, right? So to the choice box, I'll add a new text and let me just call this choice text. All right. So let me just change the text to something like choice one. All right. And let me change the font to orange kit and I'll change the font size to 40 just like our dialog box so now it's not visible since font is a little big so let me just make the text a little bigger okay so next I'll duplicate this to create another choice text so I'll call this choice 2 all right so the number of choices inside the choice box will be dynamic so instead of placing these text manually i'll use a vertical layout group on the choice box game object to arrange the choice text as a vertical list all right so let me add a vertical layout group to the choice box so now the choices will be arranged as a list automatically but we need to play with settings. So first I'll change the alignment of the choice text to center, both vertically and horizontally. And then I'll also change the alignment of the vertical layout group to middle center. So this should center everything. So next, we want the choice text to take up the entire width of the choice box. So we want the child force expand width turned on and I'll also turn on control child size width so that the width of the text will be controlled by the vertical layout group. All right. So now you can see that the text takes up the entire width. So next I'll turn off the child force expand height. If this is turned on, then the choice text will be placed so that 
it covers the entire height. We don't really want that. I just want the choices to be placed right below another, like this. All right. So we have our vertical layout group. So let me try creating more choices and it should be arranged automatically. Okay. So next, since the number of choices is going to be dynamic, we want the height and width of the choice box to be set automatically based on the content inside it. Right? So for example, if we only have three choices, then we just need a small choice box like this. But if we have lots of choices, then we want it to be big. Right? So we want to set the width and height automatically. So for that, I'll add a content size fitter component to the choice box. Okay. And then I'll change both the horizontal fit and the vertical fit to preferred size. Alright, so this looks really weird, but we can add padding to the vertical layout group so that there is some space between the border and the text. So I'll set the left and right padding to something high like 50. Okay, that looks much better, right? And then I'll also set the top and bottom padding to something like 20. So now there is some space between the text and the border. And also the good thing is, since we have a content size fitter, the size of the choice box will be automatically set based on the content inside it, right? So if I keep adding more choices, then you can see that it automatically becomes bigger, right? And also, if I make the choice text a little longer like this then you can see that the width of the choice box automatically increases right so now we can dynamically add any choices to our choice box and the content size fitter will automatically set the size to match it okay but we have a problem here so you can see that as the choice box becomes bigger, it's overlapping with the dialog box and blocking the text in the dialog box. And also its width is going beyond the screen, right? So what we want is, we don't want the choice box to grow to both sides. We just want to grow it to the top and to the left, right? So we can easily do that by changing the pivot of the choice box. So if I change the X pivot to 1 and then if we increase the scale of the choice box you can see that it's not growing in both sides it's just growing towards the left right so changing the pivot is the solution to this and next we want the Y pivot to be at the bottom so that it grows only to the top so I'll change the Y pivot to zero so that it's at the bottom. All right. So now we just have to place the choice box correctly. And now if we increase the number of choices, you can see that it will only grow towards the top. Right. And, and then if I delete the choices, you can see that the size automatically changes to match it. All right. So this is how we should set up the choice box UI so that we can have dynamic choices. So let me turn these into prefabs. So under the game folder inside UI, first I'll change the choice text to a prefab. All right. The choice text is something that we want to instantiate dynamically based on the number of choices right so let me delete these two choice text objects and let me duplicate the prefab just so that all our choice texts are a prefab all right 
So now let's go ahead and write the script for the choice box and choice text. So inside scripts, I can create the choice text in the gameplay folder. But let me actually put them in a separate folder called dialogues since we have lots of script for dialogues now. All right. So to this folder, first I'll copy the dialogue and the dialogue manager scripts. All right. This is just to organize things a little better. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so here I'll also create the scripts for choices. So first I'll create a script for the choice text. All right. And then I'll also create a script for the choice box. So inside the choice text script, we don't have much to do. We just need to cache the reference to the text component. All right. So to use text, we need to import unityengine.ui. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'll cache a reference to it from the awake function. All right. So next, I'll also create a public property for the text. So I'll just name it text field so that we don't confuse it with the text class. Okay. So this is all we have to do in the choice text script. So next let's go ahead and implement the choice box script. So this script will contain all the logic for showing the choices. All right. So in the script, first I'll create a public function called show choices. All right. And this function will also be a coroutine. And it will take the list of choices that we want to show as the input. Okay. So in this function, first I want to make the choice box game object active. So I'll say game object dot set active true. All right. And then I want to delete all the existing choices in the choice box that might be previously shown. So we can delete the existing choices by deleting all the children of the choice box, right? Here, all the choices are a children of the choice box. So if we delete all the children, then all the choice text will be deleted. So I'll use for each loop to loop through all the children of this game object. All right. So if we simply loop through the transform, it'll get us all the children of this game object. And then we want to destroy each child. So I'll say destroy child dot game object. All right. So this will destroy all the existing choices. So next, for each choice that was passed in the input, we need to create a choice text prefab and then we need to show this choice string inside that choice text. Right? So first I'll loop through all the choices in this list. All right. And then for each choice, we need to instantiate the choice text prefab that we created here, right? We need to instantiate this prefab. So first, let me actually get a reference to the choice text prefab. So I'll create a serialized field variable. All right. And I'll call this choice text prefab. 
so now we can instantiate this prefab by calling the instantiate function and passing choice text prefab for the object and then we want this choice text to be a child of the choice box right so i'll pass the transform of the choice box as the parent while instantiating the prefab okay so this function will return the reference of the instantiated prefab so let me store that in a variable called choice text object okay and then we need to set the text of the choice text object to the choice string that was passed in the input all right so i'll say choice text object dot text field so text field was a property that we created over here to expose the text okay so i'll say choice text object dot text field dot text equal to the choice string all right so this should show all the choices in the choice box so before we implement anything else i want to test if these choices are being shown correctly in the choice box so to test this function first we need to fix this error that we currently have so this function is a coroutine but we are not using a yield return statement from this function yet all right so this function should wait until a choice is selected right so we haven't implemented the code for selection yet but we know it should wait until a choice is selected so for now what i'll do is i'll create a boolean variable called choice selected and let me set it to false by default and i'll also set it to false at the start of the show choices function okay and then we can set it to true once we are done with the choice selection right but now what i can do is i can make this coroutine wait until the choice selected is true so here i'll say yield return new wait until and i'll make this coroutine wait until the choice selected is true okay so now the error is gone and we should be able to test this function if we call it from somewhere right so i'll call this function from the dialog manager all right so what i'll do is in the show dialog function i'll add another parameter for the choices okay so this is going to be a list of string called choices and then i'll set it to null by default so that it becomes optional it should be optional right all dialogs won't have choices only some dialogs will have so we have to make this optional and then what i'll do is after showing all the dialogs i'll check if the choices is not equal to null and if there is actually something inside this list so i'll check that by checking if the count of choices is greater than one all right so if there are some choices then we should show it by calling the show choices function right so to call show choices first we need a reference to the choice box so let me actually create a serialized field here for the choice box all right and now if there are choices for the dialog then we can call choice box dot show okay we don't have that function all right so here instead of making the choice box a game object i'll actually make it an object of choice box class all right and now we should be able to call show choices function 
okay and then we need to pass the list of choices as the parameter all right and since this is a coroutine i'll add a yield return at the start so that we will so that we will wait until the coroutine is complete okay so now when we call the show dialog function if we pass any choices then it should be shown in the choice box right so next let me go ahead and pass some choices when we are showing the dialog to heal a pokemon so this is a dialog where the user is asked whether they want to heal their pokemon so i'll just add two choices to it all right and the two choices will be yes or no okay so now after showing this dialog it should show two choices yes or no so let's go to unity and test if this is working so first we have to assign the scripts to our object so first i'll assign the choice text script to the choice text prefab okay and then i'll assign the choice box script to our choice box okay so in the choice box script we need a reference to the choice text prefab so let me go ahead and assign that okay and then we also have to assign a reference to the choice box to our dialog manager script so dialog manager script is in the game controller game object okay so here we have a reference for the choice box so let me just drag and drop the choice box over here all right so now we can test the game and hopefully it should show the choices after the dialog okay we forgot to disable the dialog box and the choice box by default so let me just go ahead and disable those all right and now let's test the game and let me go speak to the healer npc okay so you can see that we are showing the choices after the dialog so that's working fine so next we should let the user select a choice from this choice box and based on the selected choice we should run some action right so let's go ahead and implement that so for selecting the choices we should loop through all the choice text that we instantiated here and then we should highlight the currently selected choice text right so first we need to store all the choice text into a list so let me create a list of choice text over here all right i'll call them choice text and then i'll initialize it from here all right and then i'll add all the instantiated choice text object into the choice text list all right so here I'll say choice text dot add choice text object. So now we have a list of choice text that we can select from. So next we need a variable to store the currently selected choice. So I'll call this variable current choice. All right. And when the show choices function is called, I'll reset the current choice to zero. okay and we let the user update the current choice by using the up and down arrow keys all right so in the update function if the user presses the down arrow key then we'll increment the current choice all right and otherwise 
if the user pressed the up arrow key then we'll decrement it okay and then I'll make sure to clamp the current choice so I'll say mathf.clamp and I'll clamp the current choice between 0 and choice text dot count minus 1 so next we should loop through all the choice text and highlight the currently selected one so I'll write a for loop that will run from 0 to choice text dot count All right, and inside the loop, we should set the choice text as highlighted if i is equal to the current choice, right? So I'll create a function for that inside the choice text class. Okay, so I'll create a public function called set selected, and it will take a boolean called selected as the input. So in this function, we should set the color of the text based on the value of this boolean, right? So if selected is true, then we should set the color to the highlighted color. So we can get the highlighted color from global settings dot instance dot highlighted color, all right? And otherwise, I'll just set the color to black so now we can call that function from here so i'll say choice text of i dot set selected and this choice text should be selected if i is equal to the current choice right so this will handle the selection for us so next, if the user presses the Z key, we should set this choice selected boolean to true so that we can continue the dialogue, right? So let me set the choice selected to true from here. Okay. And once the choice is selected, we should perform some action right so for that we can take an action as a parameter in the show choices function so this action will also have an integer parameter which will be the currently selected choice and i'll call this on choice selected okay so in order to use the action class we have to import the system namespace all right and then once the choice is selected we can invoke the action all right and we have to pass the current choice as a parameter to the action okay so after this we are done with the choice selection so we can go ahead and disable the choice box so I'll say game object dot set active false to disable it. All right. So that's all we need to do in the choice box script. But now when we call the show choices function, we should also pass the on choice selected action. Right. So here I'll also add a parameter for that. All right, and I'll also make it optional by setting the default value to null. Okay, so now we can pass the on choice selected action as the second parameter to the show choices function. So next, from the healer script, when we show this dialog with the yes or no choice, we should also pass the on choice selected action. Right. So I'll just pass a simple lambda over here. So this lambda needs to have 
an integer parameter and what I'll do is here I'll define an integer variable called selected choice and I'll set it to 0 by default and then from this lambda I'll set the selected choice to the choice index that we get in the parameter of the lambda all right so now after we show the dialog and after the player selects the choice we'll have the value of the selected choice inside this variable okay so if the selected choice is equal to zero then that means the player selected yes since that's the first choice and otherwise if the selected choice is equal to one then that means the player selected no okay so now we should only heal the player's party if yes was selected so we can move all this code for healing the player's party into the yes block okay and then if it's no then we can just show a simple dialogue like come back if you change your mind so i'll just copy paste the dialogue to save time and also in the yes condition we can show a dialogue like your pokemon should be fully healed now all right and by the way if you want you can define these dialogues as a serialized field variable over here in case you want different healer npcs to say different dialogues but i'll just hard code it for now all right so now let's go to unity and test if this is working so let me go speak to the healer npc okay so after the dialogue we should get the choice box and now we can select different choices in the choice box so if i press yes then the npc will heal all my pokemon all right and then if i select no then he'll say a dialogue like this and he won't heal our pokemon all right so now we have generic choice box which we can use to show any choices in between dialogues so i'll stop the video here if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out and you can also support the series on patreon if you can afford it all right so i'll see you in the next video